So what's going to happen to our assets? Is it normal to have a 50-50 split? Well, 50-50 might be the right answer, but it is very case specific. It isn't always the right answer, and actually often it isn't the right answer, and in far fewer cases than you might think is it the fairest outcome. That's because really what people need to think about when they're getting divorced is, first of all, their needs. Both parties getting divorced have a need for housing and they have a need for income going forward. And if a 50-50 split of their assets would achieve that, then that might be the out right outcome. But if, in fact, one person is going to have to rehouse with children, then they may well need more than 50% of the assets to be able to do so. So 50-50 split may well be a starting point, but it's certainly too simplistic to say that that's the answer. And does one party always end up having to pay the other one maintenance? Well, again, it's, it's case specific. And if you're talking about spousal maintenance between the, the parents, the adults, then it will depend very much on, on what each of them have got coming into their family household. What income are they earning? What benefits do they have? And what outgoings do they have? Do they have mortgage? Do they have rent? And there will need to be an analysis of what each party's got coming into the house and what each financial responsibilities they have going out to see what the disparity is and therefore whether there needs to be a balancing exercise by a payment from one to the other, either for a shorter period of time until the other person gets back on their feet financially or potentially for a longer period of time and sometimes indefinitely or until there's a change of circumstances. And do you normally have to end up selling the house? Well again it's case specific and it's often geared around needs. If it's affordable to keep the family home, particularly where there are children involved, then that may well be the sensible outcome, both as to what the parties think is sensible, but also to what the court would think was appropriate. However, if it isn't affordable to keep the house, either in terms of paying the bills, the mortgage, the other outgoings on the house, or because it simply ties up too much of the capital and doesn't let the other person start again and rehouse, then it may be that a house would have to be sold. So it's very case specific. These are quite big things. Is do you specifically have to go through the courts to actually get, reach decisions on all these issues? No, you don't have to go through the courts. And, and as with it's often the situation on many of these family law issues, it's sensible to try and keep the courts out of the equation if at all possible. The best answers to these sorts of difficult questions are often those which people have managed to come up with themselves. But they do, having said that, need to be guided by the sort of approach that a court might take or all of the issues that a court would look at to make sure that they've covered everything off and really come up with something that's fair and that can, if possible, be ratified by a court so that they both know financially going forward they have a deal and an arrangement that's going to stick and they can get on with their lives knowing they've got some financial certainty. To what extent does it make a difference, say, how long a couple have been married? Yes, it does make a difference, uh, mainly because people tend to uh, either mix their, ma their finances together if they've been uh, married for longer and their finances have grown up and developed together so their finances are very intermingled. Um, from the perspective of a court, a court would regard the arrangements for finances when people get divorced quite differently if people have been married for a very short period of time, maybe a year or two, to how they would look at it if, if people have been married for 15 or 20 years. Again, the needs of the parties are very important, particularly if there are children. But if it's a short marriage, you may be looking more at dividing up what wealth has been developed during the marriage or giving people back the finances that they came into the marriage with. Whereas in a longer marriage, it is about sharing what the parties have built up together during the marital partnership. And the 50-50 type division may well be the starting point. Most importantly of all, children. To what extent do they affect the financial outcome? Absolutely. Children are, certainly in the eyes of, of the parties, usually the most important consideration when they're considering getting divorced. And that's also true to say in the law, they're the first and paramount consideration when looking at what the financial arrangements should be. This can often affect, the existence of children can affect the needs of both of the parties because they're going to need to work out how children can be accommodated, make sure that there's enough income around for children's needs to be met. And so a discussion about the financial arrangements will often be driven by what the arrangements need to be financially for the children. That can ha impact on the, the capital division. It can also impact on the income arrangements. If somebody has child caring responsibilities, it can make it harder for them to go out and earn income of their own and can lead to uh, people having to give more consideration to, to spousal maintenance. And likewise, it's usually the case that when one party uh, is living apart from the children, that that party pays some child maintenance to the other parent to help look after them.